Hi everyone, welcome to the channel. I have a new video for you today. This is going to be one that is on a script, a new script in PixInsight. I don't think anyone's seen it yet because it hasn't even been really released. So this will be the first time for people to see this kind of cool new tool. And this tool is one that was inspired actually by a video that I created um, for a particular technique. So I'll show you that as my first demonstration. It does illustrate um, rather dramatically the coolness of the script. So the script was written by Christoph Oler, and he um, has made it available for anyone. So if you use the repository, you can just have it downloaded to, to your uh, PixInsight installation. So I'll be showing that in the video, what it looks like in my repository, the address, but I'll also have that address listed down below. Down below is also where I would love for you guys to comment of what you thought of this cool kind of little script. It's very clever. And its cleverness, I think, uh, deserves uh, some kudos. So uh, I will enjoy showing this to you. So let me show you first the specific example of how to use it, and then I'll show you the more general way to approach using it. I think one of the interesting things about this tool is that it wasn't designed for a particular purpose. It's a more general purpose tool. So I suspect that uh, you know the creator of this script, uh, Christoph, doesn't necessarily know how it might be used going forward only that there is a certain degree of usefulness in it. And uh, so let's, let's look at what that, what that is. So what I have here is an image that is of a spiral galaxy. You can't see anything yet because it is not a stretched image. Let me show you the linear representation of this galaxy. And so the inspiration for this video was the substitution of pixels in an image based on an HDRMT result. So in other words, you use HDRMT in some way um, on an image, and then you want to put that result in a very particular place um, in, uh, say, another image. So what we're going to be referring to here are sources and targets. The source is, of course, where you're drawing the information from, and the target is where the information is going to. So the substitution is that substitution of target pixels that gets the uh, script's name. Uh, so in this case, what I'm going to do is just make this galaxy look somewhat reasonable uh, in a way in which you might expect to display it, ultimately. Uh, you know, you, you want to see everything, the spiral arms and the structure. But what you'll notice, of course, is that it has a very bright center. And this is where uh, a process like HDRMT becomes very useful. So what I'm going to do as a first step, and this is the first step that I showed, you know, in my tutorials as well, is you make... You, you make a, uh, a preview that highlights a particular part of the bright object. Uh, now, the reason for doing this is specific to HDRMT. There's a particular logic behind this. When you use HDRMT, it moderates the, the result, if you will. You get a different answer depending upon the, the size of the region that you're encompassing. If you applied HDRMT to the whole image, you would get a very different result than if you applied it to only a fraction of the image uh, that encapsulates a different quantity of light, a different amount of uh, overall brightness of information. So, I get a different result if I just include the brightest part of the galaxy as opposed to doing it to the whole field. So that's why generating um, a preview like this can be useful. So here is HDRMT the, in its default state. So I'm going to do the standard thing that I would do, which is, now I'm doing this to the preview, right? I can uh, apply the uh, lightness mode here, and then I'll choose whatever settings I want. I obviously have an entire video about how to choose the appropriate settings. I'm not going to even bother to, um, to make it optimal here. I think it's going to be good enough if I just apply this, just so you can see that there is a change in the image here. Now, there is no change in the image. I, I actually wanted to show you that. I, I swear, I did. <laughs> because this needs to be permanently stretched. You apply HDRMT on the permanently stretched image. Sorry about that. Let's, I, I guess I will not edit my mistake, so let's just go ahead and do that. This is now a permanently stretched image. Here is the preview of the permanently stretched version of the image. And now we can apply HDRMT to the preview and we get what we were looking for. Uh, perhaps we want more of an effect here uh, but let's just say that this is relatively a dramatic effect. Now we can see, you know, 
the brightness of the core and its surrounding regions are not overly overwhelming, not overly bright, and uh, that can be nice. So what we want to do is take this preview with this result and in situ, in its current position, just put the values that are in that preview into the target, which is the uh, original version of the image. Now before, I had to do uh, a little machination to make that work. Now you can use this cool new tool, this script. So you'll find that once you have it um, installed, there's now a substitute script. And what you do is you just select the source view and then the target view. So in this case, the source view is, if you look at my name, this is called uh, Full Loom Best. So the source view is Full Loom Best Preview. It's the preview as I have it. Now I can make other adjustments and make it however it is that I want, but let's say that I'm satisfied. And then for the target view, I just do Full Loom Best. Um, now I am going to, well, I'll just show you. Let's just go ahead and hit Run. And you can see it made the adjustment here. So I'm going to remove this. Well, let's just undo so you can see the difference. Undo and redo. So there's the difference. That's what HDRMT did. And I just want to get rid of the little preview thing. So you can see we now have an adjusted version of this based on the HRMT, HDRMT result. Um, and all I had to do was draw a square, manipulate that preview, and then, of course, write it back into the original image. If I wanted to be a little fancier about this, one of the things that HDRMT does is it affects bright stars and uh, perhaps you don't want that to happen. So I'm going to take a step back. Here's the preview. Now remember, we can make a different adjustment if we want. Let's say we wanted, you know, the five. Oh, I actually like the six better. I'm not going to even do it. I like the six. It's good. So there's the six. Uh, but let's say we didn't want to have the stars be impacted or other features that I might want to mask out. Well, I can still apply a mask here to the image. I already have one ready to go here. This is a mask that I generated using yet another script that also has some inspiration from uh, some of my work. This is uh, from the game script. I'm going to apply this as a mask here. And we can look at where that mask is just by uh, showing the mask like this. You can see it's um, this part of the galaxy, which is the part we're kind of working on. So I will now unshow the mask. Uh, and then we've made our modification here. So now, of course, we can do this final bit, which is we can go to Script, Utilities, Substitute, and we say the source view is going to be the preview, and the target view is our original target, is our original frame. So we go Run, and then it gets substituted right in, but now it's being substituted in with the benefit of the mask that is in place. So that was the cool thing. I hope that was dramatic enough to show you how it's nice that you can uh, now write one image into another image in a very simple way, especially taking advantage of the uh, the uh, capability of previews where you can make all kinds of adjustments and then when you like it, write it in. So that's one way to do it. There are some other cool things you can do with this script as well that I'd like to demonstrate. So I'm going to make a very general result here. Uh, I'm going to generalize how to use it by just having an image that is black and white. And so the black image will be like the uh, the source view and the white image will be the target view and then we can copy things from one to the other and you can see the capability easily. I am going to make here an empty project because that let's say yes. So if you haven't seen this before I'd like to show you a way to make an image really quickly or images. We can use pixel math to go ahead and do that. So if you haven't seen this before, this is how you can do it. I'm going to create a new image. We'll call this one our source, because that's where I'll begin. Uh, let's give it a size. Maybe it's 1,000 pixels by 1,000 pixels. We'll say it's a grayscale image, and we'll make it 16-bit. Let's make it black by putting 0. So now we have a nice source image there. If we want to make a target frame, all we do is make a copy here. Change the name to target. And of course, we want to differentiate it, so I'll make it white by doing Control-I. Now I have my source and target frame. Now, 
couple of things. This, cool, this tool is really cool. Uh, so let me show you a couple of these options. What I'm going to do first is make a preview on the image, similar to what we did before. But what I'd like to do now is just get the contents of this preview to show up over here in the target frame. So all we need to do here, uh, by the way, before I continue, let me just mention that I just drew a rectangle here for my preview. That is located in this mode area of the toolbar. There is another button that, people, that often confuses people here. It's called the New Preview button. This is not the one that lets you draw. This is one where you can specify the position and size of a preview. It's argu you know, there's an argument to be made that this uh, button maybe should be in the other tool uh, panel, but this is where the one that you use to draw previews is located. Okay, so back to our substitution. All we need to do is go to the script, and we're going to specify the source in this case is going to be that preview of our source image. And then we just say the target frame. And what's going to happen is the, uh, this, uh, this preview will be copied in that same position that it exists here into the target frame. There it is. Cool. So that's easy enough, but that, that's actually not as cool as this next little clever bit. Watch this. We can do, well, let me undo here, but we can do more than one preview, which is really kind of cool. So I'm going to make more than one preview here. I'll even do one more. I'm trying to make this dramatic, right? So I made a whole bunch of previews. Now we can go to the script. And if you look at the script, on the front page, it does indicate uh, these various permutations that I'm showing you. So you should go through and just see them um, if this isn't clear. So we have the source image this time. Now we can specify any of the individual previews that we want, but that's only going to do one preview at a time. What we really want is all the previews. That's the kind of slick thing here. So you just specify the source. If you have multiple previews and you specify a source, then it's going to copy all of those previews to the target frame. So we'll say target here and we'll say run. Isn't that cool? I just think that's neat. All right. Um, and then there's more. <laughs> there's one more kind of cool thing you can do, which is I'll undo this. And let's say we had a very particular doesn't really matter which one, I guess. Particular image that we had. It might be some smaller version, some small part of a larger view that we might have manipulated, and we want that information to go into our target frame. But you see, the thing is, when I specify an individual frame like this, and I say, please put it over here somewhere, well, we haven't specified where that is. That's the kind of the interesting point. So notice that at the bottom here, this frame has a size. It says 464 and 458. So if we wanted to go to a particular place here, all we need to do in the, uh, in the target area is specify something that has the same size. This is the default, and that's what I'm explaining here, the default uh, usage of the script. There's a little checkbox there. So we want to put the same sized rectangle here. It, doesn't need to be, it can be any position we want but the same size, so we get this information copied over there. There's a couple of different ways of doing that. Number one, and this is what I mentioned a moment ago, uh, let's see, 464458, we can hit this button. Now, I do have to be on this thing, though, when we do this. So 464458, 464, and then 458458. Now we've got a preview over here, and we can put it anywhere we'd like. That's one way. Because in general, let's say we didn't have this other um, source that we could take advantage of. But let me go ahead and just demonstrate that, of course, another way to get that same preview, at least over here, is we can drag it. But I'm saying we don't necessarily have that available. We just have an isolated image, a solitary source here to put over here. So let's actually call this then our solitary source. and we don't actually have um, this thing here to generate it. So we can put this wherever we'd like, and now we can do the final bit, which is to go to the script, substitute, and our source view is our solitary source, and our target view is, of course, where we want things to go. We can hit Run, and there it is. This is actually not all of the possible permutations. There are more. You can, do, you can use sources as previews or targets as previews. So you can do uh, some kind of funny things here. 
to take advantage of this logic of basically moving pixels from one view to another. I hope you enjoyed this. I think it's a clever little cool thing and uh, perhaps you'll find some usages. You know, comment down below if you think this is something that you would be able to take advantage of. Uh, comment if you think this is the kind of video you want to see more of. That's what gets me inspired to, to make these kinds of things. Thank you very much for joining me and I hope to see you next time with more cool things on the channel.